Good morning everyone, uh, welcome to the class of uh, marketing research and analysis. Till now we have uh, covered different aspects of uh, marketing research, the different tools uh, which uh, are utilized in conducting a marketing research study. Well, this studies uh, might not be, uh, this uh, tools and techniques can, uh, uh, need not be used only for marketing research, they can be largely utilized for other research purposes also, right. Uh, today uh, what we are going to cover is another very important technique which is basically called air as an interdependence technique. So, uh, it is called as a interdependence, interdependence technique, okay. Now, why it is called interdependence technique? Basically, uh, the reason being uh, very simple that in this case, we do not have any dependent or independent variable, right. We do not have any dependent or independent variable, okay. So, uh, what is the use of this technique? Why do we use it first of all and uh, where it is used? Let me tell you this technique that I am going to describe or uh, explain is uh, one such technique which has been which is largely utilized, heavily utilized and sometimes it is uh, I can also say misutilized. People uh, use it, researchers use it for different purposes without understanding the very basic reason of uh, why they are doing it, right. So, what is this technique we are talking about? This technique is basically uh, utilized uh, to uh, you know bring down large amount of data sets to a few fewer meaningful ones, right. That means what? What I am trying to say, for example, let us say a, a company wants to know how do people uh, buy a certain product or what variables uh, impact uh, uh, the you know customers, right. So, suppose it has uh, taken 100 variables, let us assume, right, 100 variables. Now, uh, trying to analyze 100 variables and coming out with a meaningful uh, you know explanation is a tough job is a tough job because uh, it is too tough to analyze 100 uh, you know variables across maybe 500 uh, or 1000 participants or 10,000 participants whatever it is right. So, in such a case uh, we need to have a technique which can bring down this data to a fewer uh, ones to a limit uh, to, to a very less number. So, that that becomes simpler for the researcher to analyze and interpret and uh, understand and interpret that okay. So, this technique that uh, we are talking about is basically called the factor analysis okay. So, factor analysis is nothing but a data summarization and a data reduction technique right. It basically helps you in data summarizing the data and reducing the data okay. So, let us see this factor analysis. So, it says it basically uh, examines the interrelationships among a large number of variables as I said right there are 100 variables and you need to find out some meaningful uh, you know uh, uh, meaningful uh, meaning out of it. So, in such a condition if this 100 could be reduced to let us say only 6 or 7 or 10 maximum then we would assume ki it is much simpler to explain this 10 rather than the 100 ok. So, uh, what it does is basically it attempts to explain these 100 variables uh, on basis of some common underlying dimension. Now, what is this common underlying dimension? The common underlying dimension you can understand is like some similarity, some uh, you know groups that could be formed right. For example, let us say uh, there are uh, there are uh, you know uh, students uh, who are uh, who can be uh, you know uh, good in uh, studies, who can be good in uh, sports, who can be good in let us say culture, cultural uh, activities. So, now everything that is related to somewhat related to even culture would be brought under one group that is called culture right and everything that he the student does basically maybe his uh, GP is, uh, score CGPA or his some other examination score or something right all these could be brought under another category called let us say academics ok. And similarly suppose he has done anything in sports, in yoga, in anything right related to health and the mental health and spiritual health. So, in that we would say this can be brought under the category of let us say uh, sports ok. So, making those bringing those let us say large number of variables to 3 now for example, is what is the basis or intention of uh, factor analysis. As I said it is an interdependence technique and there are no independent or no dependent variables. Earlier when we did a regression analysis, we said it is a we said it is a causal model, it is a cause and effect that is causal right. So, in that we had 
uh, y and x. So, y was the dependent and x was the independent variable. So, we said ki whatever the change in y will happen is because of the change in x. Okay. So, that was something which was related, there was a relation between the two variables. But here we are not doing anything of that kind, we are not doing any uh, relationship of dependent and independent. However, however, let me add to the uh, you know uh, understanding of the uh, uh, listener out here that the interpretations or the, the results that you derive for from factor analysis can at the end may be or can be utilized as a dependent and independent variable later on. That means, you can create dependent and independent variables out of these uh, out of this data summarization. I okay. will explain that later. So, what it is saying is the deter it determines a small number of factors based on a particular number of interrelated quantitative variables. So, first of all please remember when you conduct a factor analysis, factor analysis is to is to bring down all the variables together uh, so that they can be uh, you know some meaningful pattern can be brought out of it. Here we are not taking any string variables or non quantitative variables right. We even would like to avoid we are not doing any uh, non metric non metric right uh, variables or let us say categorical nominal uh, data or uh, kind of variables right. Suppose uh, you, we are not interested in taking uh, any demographic variables as such we are not interested because if you want to take uh, something if you want to do a factor analysis factor is basically will be done on continuous data that is data which is collected on a maybe an interval scale okay, interval scale. So, this is one thing. Another thing is that if you want to if you want to do a uh, factor analysis on let us say uh, uh, non metric data for that you have something called a boolean algebra or boolean factor analysis which is not which is not the part of our course and we are not doing it. So, uh, what is this we are saying basically? So, uh, interrelated quantitative variables first thing right. Second it says if you see in social science what happens is to measure a particular uh, uh, particular uh, you know concept let us say we cannot uh, many a times we are not able to measure it directly right. So, what we do we measure it through indirectly through some other uh, ways for example, if I am uh, interested in measuring let us say uh, let us say honesty honesty I may not be able to measure honesty through a single item right because it is a it is kind of an abstract thought. Right. So, in order to understand uh, better what we do is we ask certain number of uh, questions or items to uh, which are concerned about honesty. Okay. So, uh, third thing they are saying is they are constructs that are derived from the measurement of other directly observable variables that means what are those observable variables. Now, suppose in your questionnaire suppose you have framed a survey instrument a questionnaire in which you had 1, 2, 3, 4 let us say 10 questions okay. and this was uh, related to honesty, this was related to honesty, this was related to trust, this was related to satisfaction maybe, this was related to again honesty right, this was related to uh, uh, satisfaction. So, now this, this, this these three are actually observable variables which are somewhere related to honesty that is why I have given the name honesty and when we bring these three together they come under the group honesty. Okay. So, uh, why, uh, why is it required for a marketer? A marketer is requires it very largely because when we do the initially the study we take large number of variables in order to uh, understand the respondents uh, psychological profile, but somewhere uh, what so what happens is that in the context of doing the research we have taken large amount of variables and at the end we feel ki we have taken too much and by taking too much we are uh, unable to actually deduce uh, uh, or come to a proper inference okay now what are the assumptions you have in factor analysis basically the variables must be related that means what when you take a very when you uh, take uh, if when you conduct a factor analysis there is a assumption that the items within the factor there has to be some degree of correlation right there should be sufficient number of sufficient number of correlations there, there is even a test for which we do the bartless test of sparsity which 
uh, we will test, we will test to, uh, we want it to be significant, we will see that when I uh, show you. And uh, most of the factor analysis uh, studies uh, when you see some software uh, you know outputs also you will see that Bartlett's test. It says if it is significant that means there is some correlation among the variables that is the meaning of it right. The variables are assumed to be metric as I said, multivariate normality is not a uh, condition that is important right. If it is not there it does not make much of a difference in your study right. Now what is the sample size? To conduct a factor analysis, the sample size should be around 100 at least, right. Although 50 is there, but 50 is a very small number, right, that is a minimum uh, amount. But if you have anything less than uh, 100, uh, it is not so wise to uh, conduct a factor analysis. And um, if you have anything above 100, it is the ideal uh, number, right. How I, I think I have explained ki what should be the criteria of uh, understanding the number of respondents or number of cases? It is one variable or one item that you have taken in the study multiplied with an average of 10 respondents. So, if you have 20 variables in your study that means your average should be respondent size should be at least 200 right. So, minimum it says is 5 that is basically in a B2B sector where uh, data is very difficult to obtain. So, 5 is the minimum and uh, maximum is uh, uh, up to 20 we say 20 is the very ideal number. So, if you have 20 variables 400 that means okay, but in between is 10 right. Now, what is the purpose as I said? It is a data reduction technique right. So, its objective is to simplify the items into subsets of concepts or measures right. So, it, it uh, simplifies into creating subsets okay. It helps in validating the construct, the construct is the factor honesty for example there right. So, it helps to even validate. So, we will check how validation is also done through discriminant validity, convergent validity, basically construct validity there is a process right. So, issues. Now, uh, what the two methods basically uh, students are always they are interested to know ki what is the method uh, very famously we have the principal component analysis principal component analysis. Now, what is this principal component analysis right and against uh, what am I talking about? There are two techniques which are used to derive factors uh, in a study. So, uh, one is the principal component analysis, the other the other being the common factor analysis or the common factor analysis right, common factor analysis or just factor analysis also people say that right. Now, what is this? Uh, 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 difference between the principal component and the common factor. The difference between the principal component and the common factor being one. The point is here the total variance is taken into account to derive the factors right. So, all the, the complete all variance is taken where basically we talk about complete variance means the unique variance right and the uh, you know uh, the error variance right. So, we have unique variance, specific variance and error variance, uh, shared variance basically. So, uh, unique uh, specific or shared variance right, shared or common variance, shared or common right. So, these three variances together make the 100 percent. So, in, in during the principal component analysis there is no difference, they do not create any difference between the three and the total variance is taken into whole. But in the common factor analysis only those variance those uh, data are taken which share the common uh, the variance commonly. So, let if you look at like a Venn's diagram. So, suppose this is the common area right. So, this is the common variance. So, in a common factor analysis we talk about this this uh, variance right and we are uh, less bothered about the others right. But the uh, there is a problem with uh, you know the most utilized uh, is the principal component analysis and we do hardly seldom talk about the uh, you know common factor very uh, less principal component is mostly utilized. So, the question is how many factors are the right uh, you know how many should the researcher derive suppose you have 100 variables. So, how many factors should I derive out of this 100 variables 5, 7, 10 how many what is the right number we do not know. Then comes a question when you uh, create the factor right sometimes what happens there, there are terms which will be used uh, slowly the factors uh, sometimes for you know the, the variables are loaded into only one factor many a times. That means, when you uh, 
create a factor analysis right you will see that most of the factors they are load uh, most of the variables not factors variables are loaded onto the first factor now what does it mean now suppose let us say suppose let us say suppose let us say like this suppose I have 10 factors uh, 10 variables sorry v3 v4 v5 v10 okay this is factor 1 factor 2 factor 3 okay three factors are there it might be possible that the first six six variables are loaded into the first factor only right and only two of this or only one uh, is loaded into the second factor and two into again the third factor so because of this kind of problems what happens although although if your purpose is only data reduction then no issues right but suppose you want to have a better pattern because it so happens that it looks very strange that six variables are loaded into the first factor and the others are not getting sometimes it might not be even two only one so it looks very odd in those cases what we do is we use something called a factor rotation so why by rotating the factor the distribution of the variables is made much better across the factors okay we'll see that and finally, uh, how to interpret? Now, the two th one thing which is very important to understand uh, loadings. Now, what is loadings? Loadings is basically every variable loads into the factor, it has gotten certain value, let us say 0 0.7, let us say 0 0.65, uh, 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 okay, 0.84. Now, what does it mean? It means that in simple terms, if you want to understand that these loadings are nothing but the correlation of the variable with the factor. So, you will see that sometimes th this variable is this is 0 0.7, this could be maybe 0 0.12, this could be the remaining or something like this, right? Let us say uh, 0 0.18, okay. Now, similarly, what happens is that means if a variable is loaded very high onto one factor, it generally should be loaded less into the other factors. Right. That means it is very the it is a very unique thing and it is only for this factor. It should not be spreading across to the other factors. But but we do face a problem in certain cases. What are the problems? The problems are that sometimes we see that some variables show a high correlation between two factors, factor one and factor two, factor one or factor three, factor two and factor three. So this is something a problem, right? This problem is called a problem of cross loading. Now, what should you do? So, what should you do when there is a cross loading? We will see that. So, uh, so if you look at now, uh, the, 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 as I said, I started with, I did not say one thing that factor analysis, when I say there are two types of factor analysis, the first is the called the EFA, and then, then there is another one called CFA, right? EFA being the exploratory factor analysis, as the name suggests, you are exploring. So, you are exploring the variables to come out with certain number of factors that you are not knowing at the beginning. So, after the study, you after conducting the exploratory factor analysis, you uh, can come to, uh, you, you can get a knowledge, kill well, 5 or 6 factors are coming, maybe out of those 100 variables or 10, right, whatever. But in the case of a confirmatory factor analysis, that is a different story, where already there is a theory behind it and already the factors you are only confirming the whether the factors are ideally or adequately explaining the uh, you know the, the research study or not. That means what in such cases the researcher already knows ki what are the factors and how they are related. He is only going to test them, okay. cross checking basically you can say. So, uh, what it does basically? Principal component analysis as I explained considers the total variance and derives factors that contain little amount of unique and error variance. So, it is it takes the total variance right and often used in physical science. On the other hand, the factor analysis of the common factor analysis considers only the common or the shared variance which I have drawn there right and ignores the unique and the error variance right unique or specific variance what we say. It is complicated and thus less utilized. That is why most of the time, in the uh, if any, anybody asks uh, you, you can always know, you can always say what is the principal component analysis. The principal component analysis covers the total entire variance, and the common factor analysis, on the other hand, only uh, takes the uh, shared variance. Okay. 
So, identifying the shared variance when there is a large number of data pool data set is difficult right. So, that is why it is uh, and, and the beauty is both factor and both the you know uh, uh, principal component and the common factor analysis give a similar result once your if you see once you have the when the number of variables or items in your case are greater than 30 right. If your number of items that you are studying is more than 30 then the result that you derive from a principal component analysis and a factor analysis or common factor analysis is more or less the same right. And one more thing if you have a commonality I will explain what is commonality, commonality is nothing but the shared variance the, the shared variance basically is the shared variance that means commonality is the, the variables contribution to each uh, you know factor right. So, the square of this value the sum of the square of this value is here is called we say commonality right this is called the commonality ok. So, this commonality commonality if it is above 0 0.6 that means in almost all the cases if it is 0.6 then PCA and FA does not make a difference ok. And as I said confirmatory factor analysis is used to test whether data fit a priori expectations right that means already the researcher has in mind a particular uh, theory for example he feels okay, let us say two constructs a and b a and b have let us say there are three variables v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 right so he feels there is a clear cut relationship which they are understanding right so, and this is a covariance model. So, if 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 uh, they know already, then it is a case of a confirmatory. But suppose they would not have known, then how it would have been? It would have been something like this. So, all variables running into all other variables, right? So, when you have all variables running into each other that is an exploration case you do not know that is why you are exploring and the other case is the confirmatory ok. The basic logic so it says when you uh, it creates a mathematical combination of variables that maximizes the variance means variance means as I had explained earlier the variance explains the, the explained variance basically we are talking about whenever we say variance in this case we are talking about the explained variance in regression also if you remember we had talked about the explained and the unexplained variance right. So, uh, with more the explained variance the better the researcher has conducted his study right his explanation is better. So, uh, uh, creates new mathematical combination of variables that maximizes the variance you can predict in all variables right new combination of items from residual uh, variance that maximizes variance and what is this that means what in the first once it, it it derives the first factor let us say the first factor will explain the highest amount of variance right let us say uh, let us say the overall variance explained is 70.7 then the first factor out of it may be explains 30 right and the residual 40 is divided among the other factors. The second uh, factor have uh, explains the second highest variance, the third uh, factor explains the third highest variance and it goes on right. Continue until all variance is accounted for right all variance is that explained variance. Select the minimum number of factors that captures the most amount of variance interpret the factors right. So, once you have uh, you have got this uh, uh, factors right now the researcher needs to give a name the researcher needs to give a name to these factors. Now, how will he give a name on what basis will he give a name? The name will be given on basis of the similarity of the variables as I had said at that time in the beginning the all the uh, traits that are related with academia would be clubbed into the group of academics all the traits that are related to sports will be grouped under sports and the uh, remaining right. So, uh, this is basically what it does then uh, interpret the factors once you interpret the factor then sometimes as I said you have to rotate the factors now you have to rotate the factors now rotating the factors I will explain again there are two things. So, how this is this is how it looks like so understand it is like a car 
it is like a car steering right you are holding the steering. So, when you if you if you can turn the axis. So, if I turn the axis let us say right. So, this comes here and this automatically comes here. So, perpendicularly I can do it perpendicularly through an orthogonal rotation or which is called an orthogonal rotation or it might not be perpendicular which is called an oblique rotation right. But if I rotate what is happening the variables would be better distributed let us say the variables are like this right. So, uh, let us say the variables are like this. Huh. So, this variables distribution would be done in a better way and instead of falling into one uh, factor only which happens usually in the uh, in the unrotated factor analysis that will be distributed better ok. <coughs> okay. So, few things concepts and terms you need to understand. So, what is a factor? It is a linear composite. So, a factor is a linear composite of the variables right. So, uh, let us say it is uh, you multiply it by the uh, weight, the weight into the x which is the independent variable. So, uh, and uh, w 1 x 1 plus w 2 x 2 goes on right all the variables together. And factor score is what is a person's opinion or score on a given factor, what is a person let us say a case, what is what is the value or what is his score that is giving to a particular uh, uh, variable is uh, uh, or a given factor is called the factor score. Factor scores are utilized heavily uh, at the end of the uh, study which I will tell you how to utilize this factor scores can be utilized as a dependent variable or an independent variable for a regression study uh, we will see that. Factor loadings I have already explained right commonality I have explained. Uh, what is a factorally pure means what sometimes a test only loads on one factor a test loads on only one and one factor. So, that means we have only single factor it is good in some cases uh, that means uh, the other factors do not uh, there are no other factors it as it uh, means that basically right. So, uh, so, there is something called another term that is important for uh, researchers to understand that is called a scale score. Now, what is a scale score? A scale score is basically nothing but it is a summated scale score. So, there are two scores you can use one is the factor score the factor score uh, comes which is the explanation or the it tells you about a person or a respondent or a case uh, you know uh, 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 how much value has put on to a particular factor or how much importance. Similarly, we have something called a summated scale. Now, summated scale is being largely utilized and it is a new uh, uh, you know development which is largely used. Now, what is summated scale? Now, let us say there is a factor 1 ok. So, factor 1 was nothing but a combination of factor v 1 plus v 2 plus v 3 plus let us say v 4 let us say. Now, summated scale says now suppose this is respondent 1 respondent 2 it goes on right. So, whatever score he has given for variable 1 let us say uh, in a scale of 1 to 7 maybe right he has given 5 this for this he has given let us say 3 for this he has given let us say 4 for this he has given again uh, um, let us say 4 right. So, the summated scale summated scale summated value will be nothing but the average. So, 5 3 8 for 12 4 16 divided by 4. So, that is 4 for this respondent for this respondent similarly for respondent 2 for respondent n 100 200 whatever. So, you this summated scale is highly utilized is a very very important uh, tool because later on you can use those factors as an independent variable or a dependent variable for a different kind of study for a cause and effect study right. So, that is where it comes of great uh, use right. Achha. One more thing is when I am saying uh, factor score I have a summated scale I have explained then there is also something called uh, the Eigen value. Now, what is an Eigen value? This is also very important for uh, you to understand. Now, as I said I explained the commonality right I explained the commonality there is something also called an Eigen value. Now, Eigen value is a vertical score right. So, it is the it is the uh, it is how uh, you know variables are loading into a particular factor. So, the squared the sum of the squared loadings across the factor this total is called the Eigen value right. So, the Eigen value is one of the ways which is used to extract factors right in a factor analysis study we will see. 
So, Eigen values uh, uh, if it is uh, less than 1 we generally omit, we generally omit right, we avoid any uh, factor analysis uh, study which uh, obtains a Eigen value of less than 1 because that means it is not explaining the item is not explaining itself right as good as that. So, Eigen value above 1 is at least that means that the the variables or the, uh, the the factor is explaining itself as good as that ok. So, we will see how many factors how do you interpret how does the researcher understand how many factors to be taken right ok. What I will do is we will uh, 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 we'll just I uh, will tell you brief you about the ways of identifying the factors which I was just saying. One of the method is through a graphical method which is called a scree plot method right like it is a twist you know you know the bend in the arm. So, what is a scree plot I will just show you I will just show you a scree plot is basically nothing but you know this is how the data point changes for example. Let us say it is something like suppose this is the data point. So, this is first second curve third curve fourth then it is stagnant maybe. So, when you see such uh, you know such kind of the arrangement of data then we say ki, well there are 4 curves, 4 uh, points where there are curves the curve is bending right. So, we will say there are 4 factors. So, out of the all the variables all the variables v 1 to v n. So, we are saying there are 4 factors coming out. So, this is a method which is used graphically called a scree plot test ok. The second is through the Kaiser uh, or the latent root criterion Eigen values. Eigen values or latent root if you see do not get confused it is the same thing right. So, it says Eigen values greater than 1 is used I just explained why 1 right that means it explains itself at least. So, Eigen values greater than 1 is taken as a criteria to generate the number of factors. So, 1 is the amount of variance accounted for by a single item 1 is the amount of variance accounted for by a single item. So, if Eigen value is less than 1 then factors account for less variance then the factor is explaining less variance than the single item. So, one item is one factor and if the Eigen value is less than one that means it is not even explaining a single item. Uh, uh, well, what we will do is we will continue the same uh, session in the uh, we'll continue the same thing uh, same factor analysis in the next session. Uh, uh, now, we will take a uh, break here. Thank you so much.